at top of the morning tea, it's time to dish with D. That's me. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you all. I had to go there. Oh, look, got my shirt on. I didn't get to wear this last year because our St. Patty's party was canceled. But we didn't have school. So I get to wear last year's St. Patrick's Day shirt. And honestly, it's the first time I've ever bought one. I am not even a smidgen Irish. My husband says I'm Irish by injection. My kids are Irish, or they are a quarter Irish. So I am not even, I am just Italian. If you, I shouldn't say that, but I am. And look, my girl Yvonne hooked me up with a green mask. So I am all St. Patty'd out. Well, for me, it's all St. Patty'd out. So, or I should say St. Patrick, cause they don't like to say St. Patty, they like to say St. Patrick. I have a son named Patrick, it's his day. So, oh, good thing to vlog about, since it's St. Patrick's Day. We had a talk on the live last night. They said, are you eating corned beef tomorrow, Dee? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I'm eating corned beef. Sure. I mean, is it high in points? Yes. I'm having corned beef and cabbage. We have it every St. Patrick's Day. Sometimes I do corned beef specials instead of like the traditional corned beef and cabbage. I just cook the corned beef and slice it down and make a little, you know, special out of it. But this year I decided just to go corned beef and cabbage because we did that last year. My one son's not happy. He'd rather have the special. And I did, I made, I think it was one of being nine points for my sandwich last year. I used six four seven bread and made my own dressing, my own coleslaw. It was really good you know it was it was definitely filling I, it's not like i sat down like oh, you know i had my light sandwich it was delish too that bread 647 holds up really well i mean i made it and i had to grill it so it was fabulous but now we're just doing traditional for beef and cabbage you know the cabbage is zero yeah i have to weigh out my corned beef but you know what i'll probably go into dinner with at least the very least 13 points so I only have to count 13 points of corned beef because my cabbage will be zero sometimes I make potatoes I don't think I will this year only because I don't think I have any and I don't really go into the store for them I might throw some carrots in there but I do have some actually small baby potatoes I could throw in for the guys I don't necessarily necessarily need the potatoes but but yeah it's it's in we have this conversation a lot on dish with D tea with D about having things you know, I'm a believer, I mean, you guys got to know me by now, that if it's my birthday, I'm going to have cake. If it's St. Patrick's Day, I'm going to have corned beef. Why? Because it's tradition and it's just food. I don't like when we put food on this pedestal of fear. I am not going to fear food. If I fear food, oh, my windows are dirty, hold on then what have I gained through this journey? Nothing. I've gained another, I, I went from an overeating disorder to a fear of food. I am not going to let food control me. And that's what this vlog is about. Do not let food control you. Let me tell you something. Corned beef's not going to put weight on me. I'm, I'm, how much am I really going to eat? I mean, there's three of us. I mean, am I going to eat the whole stinking corned beef, slab of corned beef? No. But honestly, we're, we want it left over because we like making corned beef hash. Oh God, if you've never made corned beef hash. It is legit fabulous. Oh, it is so good. Peppers and onions and potatoes and they're cooked to perfection. And then at the end you just throw the corned beef in and then you put an egg in there. Like I, of course, like mine scrambled, but the boys like theirs runny all through it. It's just insane. So yeah, I have to save corned beef for that. So. And if I, if I think I'm, if I'm going to go into dinner starving, I will make, that's a huge thing too. I can't go into dinner starving. Like don't starve yourself all day to make dinner. It's, it, you, it defeats your, it's just not worth it because at least for me, I go in there too hungry and too hungry day makes really bad choices. So yeah, I'm going to have my afternoon snack. I'm going to have my piece of fruit. So I won't be going in there hungry. And if I'm really hungry, then I will definitely like drink a premier protein or something for two points. Or maybe I'll make a <clears throat> devotional nutri um, devotion shake for one point. No, I think that's two points too. Yeah, the milk and the thing. Sorry, <laughs> it's two points too. Two points of something like that 
to hold me off is a much better option than something else. So I definitely, but I, I see a lot of people and you might see them as well, you know, in your travels, you'll see people that will not eat. I don't know the purpose of that. Uh, it's not, you just, you can't save all your points for one meal. You really can't. You really shouldn't. Now granted, you can have zero point foods during the day and then bank your points like that. But don't sit there and not eat anything because you're only fooling yourself. It's never going to be sustainable. If you see people that can't maintain their weight, it's because they don't eat properly. Bottom line. I mean, you're never going to have the same exact weight, but if you're having issues, that's probably it. Eat too much one day, don't eat enough the next day. And honestly, will one binge day put weight on you? No, it won't. Like, it might if you don't eat enough you know if you're I stress this all the time if you're not eating your points to lose weight faster guess what happens when you do yeah light bulb so it's not really worth it you see these blue dot things you know they irk the crap out of me they just do because of course but like I said Weight Watchers is assuming that you're eating enough zero point foods that it's really not going to matter. See, that's their theory. Well, if she's eating enough chicken and she's eating enough yogurt, well, what if you're not? And if you're only eating the portion of chicken, you're definitely underpointing yourself. And if you underpoint, you're definitely undercalorizing. Calorizing, that's I made a word up, yourself. I mean, maybe the people that eat uh, zero point foods and don't weigh and measure and have a crap ton, maybe they would work out better at having under points than somebody who weighs and measures their zero point foods. I mean, I, I weigh and measure mine, but I'm also eating all my points. So if you're weighing and measuring your zero point foods and you're eating 16, 15, 13 points a day, I would lay bets you're not eating enough. It's just my theory. I'm not a professional. Just based on the experiences that I've had. You know, I've had weeks where I've had binges and I've had a good week on the scale because what I think is a binge and the reality really isn't a binge but in my mind it is and I'm glad in my mind thinks that way it's good it's good that I I have this you know accountability to myself <clears throat> because if I didn't then I would probably binge more than that and then that would not be good but you know what eating a cookie here and there is not going to put weight on you like we get to this for, we're fearing food food is not the enemy do not fear a cookie. Like, I mean, granted, there's some cookies, you know, that I can do more damage than I would care to tell you. But one cookie won't do it. One muffin won't do it. You know, people think, oh my God, I had an extra piece of pizza. One pizza pizza is not going to do it. You know, because you're not having a gigantic piece of pizza. Most pizza is eight inches. You know, you're having a piece of pizza. Don't let fear rule you. And I think a lot of people, that's what happens. And seriously you can't go from one extreme to the other you can't go from overeating to being fearful of food like I said I want to just be normal I want to be balanced in my thinking and in my thoughts and, and because if I'm sitting here fear food then what, what have I what have I accomplished oh you have a better waistline big deal I'm so messed up I don't want to be messed up anymore that's why I picked a higher weight. That's why I don't care that I'm a size 10. I sit there and I don't care if people think, oh my gosh, she could stand to lose another 20 pounds. Oh, I've, I've been told that. It's okay. You know, I'm all right with that because you know what? I'm not struggling with my meals. I'm not fearing food. I'm enjoying the food I'm eating. I don't fear going out. I don't feel, I don't fear social events. I don't avoid going up because I'm afraid, oh my God, I won't be able to eat or I don't want people to say anything. So I'm living a normal life. And those people who mock me, all right. Yeah. And am I 21? No. I'm 54 years old. What do I have to prove to anybody? I'm not proving to anybody. And that's a great feeling and it's empowering. And I'm comfortable with myself. See, those people aren't. And I you know I, I really wish I could hug them because I know somehow there's something that's just, you know, there's some kind of, I don't know, were they told? 
they mocked. I don't know what the situation is, but to condemn somebody because you think that they don't look to what you think they should look is a bit messed up. It's a bit messed up. Ooh, let's make this turn. Oh, it's kind of drizzly this morning. Again, no sun. I don't know if you can tell. It's kind of, ugh. It was miserable yesterday, miserable today. But hope you enjoy your St. Patrick's Day. Eat whatever you plan to eat and enjoy whatever you're eating. I am also going to put a, uh, which I love with corned beef. I've made this before. I was ever on Weight Watchers. Okay, I tell people this all the time. When I would go to Sam's Club, I would always get the big Berkeley and Jensen non-fat Greek yogurt. Before it was even a thing on Weight Watchers. We liked it. To me, it tastes like sour cream. To my family, it tastes like sour cream. They've never said to me, oh, mom, can you buy sour cream? This never. In fact, they call it sour cream. Get the sour cream out? Okay. So I've always made this um, sauce with just yogurt and horseradish. That's it. Yo I think that. I think that's it though. I think it's just yogurt and horseradish. And we like, dip our corned beef in it. So, when you know, and it's zero points now. Like, yeah. So I'm going to have some yogurt sauce on the side because we just, I love the creaminess of that sauce. And on top of that, briny, delicious corned beef. Oh, I'm so looking forward to dinner. And drizzled on my, I'm going to put plenty of pepper on my um, cabbage too. Love lots of black pepper and some salt. <gasps> So excited for dinner. So, in fact, I didn't make Bailey's appointment today so I could be home to cook my corned beef all day. I like it on the stove. I've tried it in the crock pot. Didn't like it. I don't know whether it just, I don't know. Didn't like it. Somebody suggested the instant pot, but I'm just, I don't know. I think I might have done it in the instant pot last year. I don't remember though. But you know what? If I do it on the stove, I know it's going to be good. So, it's, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I probably should do an instant pot, quite honestly, but I'll just do it in my, um, in my pot. Since I'll be home, it's easy enough. And I got the cabbage. Oh, I might make extra cabbage because cabbage is good for, for your digestive health. And Lord knows I need some digestive health. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> That's another video that I've made a million and a half times my digestive health. So that is going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoy your holiday. I hope you enjoy your corned beef if you're having it or whatever you plan to have. Remember, if you're not enjoying your food, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, I had green pancakes this morning. I wanted to tell you that. I had, I made pancake muffins because it was that day for this week, but I wanted to make them green for St. Patrick's Day. No, I did not put food coloring in them. I used my third cup of the Trader Joe's protein pancake mix, third cup of cashew milk and an egg, and I put a tablespoon of the Lakanto matcha powder that I got. Oh, it was good, it was different. Every green, they're on my Instagram, and, and on my Facebook group I posted a picture, but they were fun, it was fun to have. I've been wanting to, like, I was at, I'll tell you the story real quick. I was at Dunkin' Donuts uh, getting an iced tea the other day and I was looking on their menu and it has a matcha donut. I was like, matcha donut? So now I'm obsessed with like making a matcha donut. So maybe matcha pancake muffins so that, and, and I have to say I do enjoy the Lakanto matcha latte. It's a tablespoon, it's mixed with their um, monk fruit of course. And I think it's a real, it's it's probably a little bit lighter in the grassy scale than um, other matches. It's a ceremonial grade, which is, I hear, is what you're supposed to drink. It's not a cooking grade. It was quite delightful. Uh, I'd say it makes a really great latte. I mix it with, I get the tablespoon of matcha powder and I do like two tablespoons of hot water, really hot water, and mix it. Nice, it's all dissolved, and then I put it inside my cup of cashew milk, unsweetened. You can do any kind of milk you choose. I have like unsweetened cashew, and then I get my little frother. I froth that bad boy up. Oh my gosh, is it good? Yep, so it's the mice cubes. I've had it many my life. I've been drinking it, it's so delicious. So it's one point win win for me, other than the, you know, the one at Duncan's, probably like 10 or 11, I think. And I have been enjoying, which I don't have that much, is the oat, oat milk. God, it's, so good. it's four points a cup. 
but delicious. Thank you for joining me today on my way into work. I am here. I'm going to go in and start my unfortunate four hour shift. And I will talk to you all on the next video and have a thumbs up this video if you enjoy. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. And we will dish another day and have a great day.